Good day, and thank you for joining us for an update on recovery efforts for the Bush Creek East wildfire. We're joining you today from the traditional unceded territories of the Sequetmik, Silks Okanagan, Sinixt, and Tanaha Nations. I'm Tracy Hughes, Communications Coordinator with the CSRD. Joining me is Derek Sutherland, Acting General Manager of Community and Protective Services. Later on, we'll hear from Chris Jensen, who's representing the North Shushwap Disaster Relief Society. We've now moved into what is known in emergency management as the recovery phase, and we wanted to give you a continued update. Derek, can you tell us a little bit more about what's going on? Yeah, absolutely. Thanks, Tracy. So we're continuing to support the residents in the North Shushwap that experience uh, catastrophic loss during the fire. Um, the number one goal of the CSRD is supporting those residents that lost homes. Um, a lot of effort has, uh, with, uh, we've been putting a lot of effort into working with residents on a case-by-case -case basis to help support them uh, depending on their circumstance. Um, emergency so uh, support services, also known as ESS, has now been extended for residents uh, that need it until January 15th. The CSRD is working with the province and other agencies to tr transition those residents who need longer term supports to services away from ESS and into programs and services provided by the province and other nonprofit agencies. Um, with the after action review, uh, we're continuing to make plans for community outreach on the after action review. Uh, we want to hear from the community and learn from the experience. Uh, we applied for funding to conduct this, and we're awaiting word from the province. Uh, we are hopeful this will be approved so plans can move ahead in the new year. We'll be reaching out to it in a number of ways to bo both in person and online, uh, so we can reach as many North Shushwap residents as possible. We'll also be looking to engage with the residents in the Sorrento area because, of course, they were affected by the fire as well. Um, the reconstruction of the Scotch Creek Fire Hall is front and center. Uh, we're anxious to get started on building them a permanent home. Uh, we're working with our insurance provider to make this um, to move this project ahead. Uh, lots of ideas are being explored for shared uh, space with the fire service. Uh, so more options to come in the new year. Uh, we're really looking forward to being able to get this project right uh, from the beginning because, of course, the uh, old fire hall was added on to over the years and uh, ended up with a bit of a wonky configuration. So now we have an opportunity to uh, build something that's right for the uh, community. As far as rebuilding is, go, uh, is concerned, for those with rebuilding on their mind, reach out to the CSRD Development Services. They're there to help. They're there to help guide you through the process. Uh, please do uh, engage the support that is available through the Development Services Department. Uh, make your first call to us. Our trained staff can walk you through the process, and we're here to help. Uh, you can contact um, the building department at 250-832-8194 or email plan at csrd.bc.ca. That's plan at csrd.bc.ca. That's it for me. Thanks, Tracy. Thanks, Derek. Um, with the holiday season fast upon us now, there are still many needs for those in those hard hit areas of the North Shushwap in particular. The CSRD is continuing to coordinate the donation of items, especially larger items like furniture, tools, or appliances. You can email eocdonations at csrd.bc.ca or call us at 250 833-3396. Provide the information about what you have to offer. Um, we'll take that down and help match it with people who are in need. Of course, monetary donations are also welcome. You can do that through uh, any of the branches of the Salmon Arm Savings and Credit Union, and that goes through to the Shishwap Community Foundation. On that note, We'd like to thank the community who have stepped up in so many ways to help one another. In the North Shushwap in particular, one of the most recent uh, developments is the formation of the North Shushwap Disaster Relief Society. 
These are members of the North Shushwap community, residents who live right in the community and are your neighbors. And they're working with the Shushwap Community Foundation to make sure that those residents in need get the supports that they that are offered. I'd also like to introduce now Chris Jensen, one of their members, to talk a little bit about the society and its purpose in the North Shushwap. Hi, Chris, welcome. Thank you, Tracy. Uh, yes, I'm gonna back up a little bit. You mentioned the, uh, the uh, Shushwap Community Foundation. I'm a member of the board of that as well, and also a, a member of their grants committee. And they started actually before the wildfires started uh, an emergency relief fund. Uh, we weren't thinking about wildfires at those time. We were running into issues with people who we had granted money, but had an emergency, a pump broke down or something. So we thought we better have a way to move quickly rather than through our traditional grant cycle. So we just, so we established the emergency relief fund. The wildfires hit very, very soon thereafter. And uh, the, the donations just literally poured into the emergency relief fund um, to the tune of somewhere in the neighborhood of $800,000. And um, <clears throat> so now how are we gonna get that money out to the North Shushwap community? So I was tasked with uh, figuring out a way to do that. I met with some of the, uh, some of the uh, citizens of the North Shushwap and we formed the society that you just mentioned. And these are all volunteers. And as we've gone through the process, looking at applications, and we've looked at a number of applications and we have funded uh, already well in excess of $100,000 out to people to help them out. Inevitably, these are uninsured people. Um, and uh, usually are, are homeless. Some of them had homes that were totally destroyed, but usually are homeless. And they're just trying to figure out a way to get back on their feet and we're figuring out ways to help them out. We've met once a week now for about two, two and a half months and are really getting rolling on the process. The people that work with me, I, I have to hold them back a little bit. I'm a little bit worried about too much passion and too much burnout. That's great, Chris. Um, you know, those volunteer efforts are so, so appreciated, um, especially when it's coming from directly within the community. And these are people um, that you may bump into in the grocery store or uh, walking down the street. Um, clearly, you have a, a really good understanding of what those community needs are. Um, so what's the best way for people to donate? Because I understand there are still gaps. I mean, 800000 sounds like a lot of money but uh, we know the need is also great. Well, of course, the need is far, far greater than that, which is why you need people to roll up their sleeves and go to work. Like, how are we best going to deal with this? And how are we uh, going to see if we can lever this money through other uh, organizations or getting uh, people which have done in the past to continue to donate? Um, the, the way that we are doing it is through the Shushwap Community Foundation. The main, well, there's lots of reasons, but the main reason for that is that people then can get tax receipts. We are, are not CRA certified. We don't want to be. That's a prank that we just didn't want to go so that uh, they can get their tax uh, receipt that way. And they will then uh, deliver the money to us uh, as needed, which they've been doing. Right. And so people then are applying to, to your society, um, explaining their needs, and you're able to assist them with things like maybe uh, they need a power pole installed to, to uh, make their home usable again, or they may need some help with top up for, uh, for a rental, um, rental housing. Those are the kind of things that, uh, that people can reach out to you for. Yes. Well, and, and there really is no limit, but that it traditionally has been so far the kinds of things um you know things that want they want replaced and of course it's all about the winter season coming up and we've really had this uh, sense of urgency that i say has been i think a bit stressful i live in scotch creek as do two of the other volunteers and the other ones live in lee creek and Engelmont. and um so we're really trying to make sure that people can get through the winter and there are some that won't be able to, and you've referred to that, and they'll have to be housed in a different way. And we are uh, more than willing if they can find a, a housing accommodation that works for them, 
but can't afford it or can't afford all of it uh, to help them out with that. And really that can be a very, very simple cost-effective way for these people to have homes uh, and roofs over their head for the winter. Wonderful, that's great news, Chris. And again, we thank you and the rest of the, uh, the your board on the society that's uh, that's working really hard to help uh, help meet those needs. That's uh, that's how we're going to get through this: is uh, neighbors helping neighbors and citizens helping other citizens. So we we genuinely appreciate that. Um, I did want to pass along as well to uh, those who are watching, if you want more information about the North Shushwap Disaster Relief Society, they do have a website, it's nsdisasterrelief.ca. So you can go there and there'll be more information about, uh, about what they're doing and their activities in the community. So thanks very much for being with us, Chris. You're uh, more than welcome. Yeah. Wonderful. Derek, uh, any sort of final words here? Yeah, you know, I love um, this North Shushua uh, Disaster Relief Group because it's a homegrown solution uh, to address problems right in the North Shushua. And uh, being a small local group, it's nimble, it can be responsive to needs, and uh, like maybe they need a quart of firewood or maybe they need uh, help with supplementing their rent, this group can be nimble and respond to that kind of uh, request. And, uh, and I just love that partnership with the uh, Shushwap Community Foundation uh, because every dollar that's donated uh, to that group uh, goes back to those people that need it in the North Shushwap who've been affected by this particular fire. So we see a lot of donation bins around, uh, but this one is the one I encourage people to donate to uh, because um, there's very little, um, there's very little overhead to it and the money is getting into the hands of the people that need it. So thank you, Chris, for the work that you're doing. And, uh, and if you are wanting to donate, please consider donating to the Shushwap Community Foundation. And of course you can do that through a local SASKU branch. Great. Thanks so much, Derek. Um, thank you, um, your viewer, our viewers here today um, for watching and listening and, uh, and then for hopefully taking that ne next step and making that, um, that holiday contribution towards making things a little bit brighter for this, uh, this season for those residents who, who really experienced uh, such a tragedy um, this summer in our area. So we appreciate it very much. Excuse me, and I just underline what Derek said. We'll put it to work right away, and it's not low overhead. It's <coughs> zero overhead. These are all volunteers. Mm -hmm. Any sort of administrative cost, like web pages and so on, is being paid out of the interest earned on the money that's that's been donated so far. Love it. Wonderful. Thanks again, Chris. Uh, we hope to be uh, hearing some more good news about some disbursements and uh, and how your society is continuing to help um, with some uh, some of our uh, our videos here in the future. Um, I wish you all the best and uh, thank you very much for your time today. You're welcome.